So when I came to import my old recordings into Cubase, I hit a bit of a snag. Cassette tapes don't always play back at the same speed they were recorded. So back in the day, we used to master our finished recordings onto two track tape, and then we'd copy them off onto cassettes. Now the problem with cassettes is that your average domestic cassette machine, unless it's a very high end machine, isn't probably playing at exactly one and seven eighths inch per second, which is the speed they're supposed to play at. And that was the case with the tape machine that I had in my studio. So when I came to import my old audio files into Cubase and match them up to the tempos of the songs, the MIDI files that I'd imported previously, they didn't match. And this is how I fixed it. So we're in Cubase and here we are. This is Give Me A Reason, the song that I'm working on at the moment. And what I want to do is to import the audio file. Well, that's fair enough. I'm going to just set the marker at the point where the audio file should start and import it. There we go. Give me a reason. OK, so we open it up, copy it in. And there we go we now have our file, which for the moment we're going to move up underneath the drums. Because what we want to do is to line up the transients in the old recording with the drum points. We need to do this really before we start with anything else. There are two issues. Let's zoom to full and have a look. One is that the recording doesn't quite line up secondly, because the tape machine played it back at a different speed, not only is it a different length, but the pitch is wrong as well. So simply stretching it isn't going to be good enough. We need to time stretch it so that not only do the transients line up so we can play the, new, the MIDI drums along with the original track to see that they're perfectly in sync, but we also want to alter the pitch of the recorded file so that it's back to the original tuning. Fortunately, Cubase has a way of doing this. And we go up to here to the pointer and there is three options. Sizing moves contents, sizing applies time stretch and the normal sizing. You can actually cycle through these by hitting the number one above the Q on your keyboard. And as you can see, it's now in time stretch mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the beginning and then time stretch the end. So if we zoom in, we can see that we'll zoom in a bit more. These are those two snare drums and these are the transients. It's not that far out or so it would appear. So we'll turn off the grid because we want to be able to time slip it and then just move it. And as you can see, as we select this, the transients line up. Now you can see they're already going out of sync here. If I just zoom in a bit more, we can see the transient markers, those dotted lines. And we can just adjust until they're spot on the grid. That's our first snare beat. That's the one we want to line up. The fact that we have something beforehand, we have these vocals, isn't really helpful. If we can get the transients at the beginning and the end to line up, this will automatically stretch to land where it should land. So let's go to the end and we'll do the same thing. We'll zoom in. And as you can see, the last transient here should be there. It's way out. It's slipped by a good beat and a half. So what we can do is first of all go back to our normal stretch and just pull that in a bit because otherwise we're going to be working with a bit that's off the end of the screen. 
and we'll buy time stretch and we zoom in again oh that's repeating it I don't want to do that yeah now we can apply the time stretch and pull that out a bit and as you can see we've overdone it so now I can see what I'm doing I will just pull those back in and for those who are saying why don't you just use musical mode it don't work because we're so far out and this so we're still not quite right we're still overstretched here Let's now we need to move the whole thing And it's a question of just sliding back and forth until you get it right. So we'll line them up now we're we're going a bit out so we want to the end and you kind of tweak it a bit and what we'll do now is we'll have a listen to see where we are so we zoom and we'll solo the drums and now we'll listen to what we've got on this listen to them both together okay so that there it's a cacophony isn't it that transient that we're trying to line up is actually on the snare right. So that transient there is on that transient there. So we'll go back to the beginning. Wrong number. Right. So we're getting there. These are beginning to line up. And we go back to the end. Okay, so we're kind of there. We're getting the hits coming in, but they're not kind of lining up. And these are all over the place. Let's just see what that sounds like. Give me a reason. So I've lined up the beginning the a cappella bit 
and you can see if we just pull that back so we've not cut anything off at the beginning let's zoom out so we can see what we're doing so we've now got those and we've got some transients there so we're always always trying to line up the transients so let's pull this in I'm not up on the bar for the moment and we, we're nearly there so go put the end and have a look where we're at at the end we're still way out here but we can now we just get the uh, it's a hit and miss process there's a way to treat to fix it in a minute we're kind of looking to get most of them right now bearing in mind this is off tape so let's have a listen So it's a bit of flamming going on, but not a huge amount. Let's zoom this to four rows. So we've got something that's a bit more reasonable to look at. And let's have a listen to the end bit. So it's lined up at the beginning and the end. I'm not proud. Let's hit Q. Quantize. And now we should find that our drums and our transients are lined up to the grid. So let's zoom in and see. So it's a combination of being a bit of a hit and miss process and in the end adjusting where the hit points aren't falling on the grid to line it up with your MIDI. I might wonder why I bother. Well, the answer is when I come to record the song, I want to start it out with the big mass vocal. And the starting point for the big mass vocal is those. I want them, but I want them in key. So that's why I'm sorting them out. And the only other thing we've got left to do now is to put the original tail back on that we had taken off. And if I turn the grid on, that'll lock to the grid. And we now have our reference track in time and in key, ready to start recording. Almost. We still haven't sorted the bass out, but that's another story. So until next time, you take care of yourselves.